Hello, hello, hello. So, ito, second discussion natin for the topic. And the next chapter for our, ano, for our subject will be conceptual framework for financial reporting. So, with that, start na tayo. So, anong learning objectives ng chapter na to? Kung saan, chapter ulitin natin, is the conceptual framework for financial reporting. Now, ang unang objective is to state the purpose, state, status, and scope of the conceptual framework. Pangalawa naman is the objective. State daw natin yung objective ng financial reporting. Then, identify the primary users ng financial statements. Explain briefly the qualitative characteristics of usual, useful information and how they are applied in financial reporting. Second to the last, define the elements of financial statement, statements and state their recognition criteria and paano sila dinederecognize. Dine and lastly, state daw natin the measurement basis used in financial reporting. So, I hope you've read your books in advance. So, let's start with the discussion. Una, pag-usapan natin yung purpose. Purpose, bro. Nabubulol tayo ngayon. Ah. Pag-usapan daw natin yung purpose of the conceptual framework. Now, if you can still remember sa discussion natin sa Oblicon, di ba pinag-usapan natin yung difference ng constitution from other laws? Di ba? Napag-usapan natin yun. Na kung saan, yung constitution sa yung basis, sa yung guideline, sa yung guide, paano na popomulgate, na enact yung mga batas dito sa bansa natin. Basically, ganun yung, ano eh, yung nature niya. And if there's a conflict with the constitution, sinong mananaig? Yung constitu- if there's a conflict, We, between the constitution and other laws, sinong mananaig, eh di si constitution. Now, yung nature ni conceptual framework, para siyang constitution ng accounting. Yan yung nature niya. Para siyang constitution ng accounting. sa yung nagiging basis. Oo. The conceptual framework prescribes the concept for general purpose financial reporting. Now, if you can still remember, anong sabi natin si general purpose financial reporting, di ba? Yung objective niya is to Provide information that is based on the common needs of the uh, common needs of the ano of the majority of the users, de ba? Ganon yung general purpose financial reporting kaya nga general purpose ang tawag eh to satisfy the common needs of the majority of the users. Now, anong purpose ng ano conceptual framework when it prescribes the concept for the ano general purpose financial reporting? Una is to assist the International Accounting Standards Board para silang yung Congress, di ba? Sila yung Congress, sila yung nag-promulgate, sila yung nag-e-enact ng mga batas. In this case, accounting standards. Tinutulungan daw nito yung IESB in developing standards that are based on consistent concepts. Hindi tulad ng Shota mo, inconsistent. Sabi dito, dapat based on consistent concepts. Pangalawa, assist preparers in developing consistent accounting policies when no standard applies to a particular transaction or when a standard allows a choice of accounting policy. Now, di ba, the business, the economy, masyado na siyang dynamic, masyado na siyang complicated. Now, there are certain instances where uh, may mga instances, may mga transactions sa kung saan yung mga standards natin, yung mga accounting standards natin, hindi niya sakop. Oo, kasi nasa, masyadong complicated or masyadong bago. Like for example, yung cryptocurrency. Paano yun report Nahihirapan yan. Yung sa mining, as until now, wala pa rin standardized accounting standard para magamit yan sa mining and other mineral resources. Later on sa intermediate accounting yun, makikita niyo yan. So may mga certain transactions, may mga certain economic events na kung saan wala pang standards na nagasta uh, nagagovern over that. So in the, in those cases, ang sabi dito, kung walang ganun, kung walang standards na nagogovern over those transactions, you can use the conceptual framework as a guideline. Pwede mo siyang gawing guide kung anong gagawin mo. And pangalawa, or when standards allows a choice of accounting policy, yan, yun sa gaya na sabi natin, sa, may, sa mga mineral resources, ganyan yan. Binibigyan ng company ng choice papano niya i-go-govern, papaano niya i-report yung transaction na yun. But take note, ngayon pa lang sabihin ko na, kasi next slide, sabihin din naman to, kapag may conflict sa conceptual, di ba, uli, before that, 
'di ba sabi natin sa obliko natin constitution may conflict sa other laws sinong mananaig constitution pero pagdating dito conceptual framework accounting standards if there's a conflict between them mananalo ang accounting standards mananalo ang accounting standards so yun 'di ba ang conceptual framework para siyang constitution. Pero if there's a conflict between the, conce- between the conceptual framework and the accounting standards, ang accounting standards siyang mananalo. And lastly, assist all parties in understanding and interpreting the standards. Oh, standards. Kasi di ba, ang basis nito, ang, bi- ang core principle niyan, ang basis ng mga ginagawa natin is yung conceptual framework kasi para siyang constitution. Now, Take note, ito, parang nasabi natin ito eh. The conceptual framework is not the PFRS, yung Philippine Financial Reporting Standards, hindi sa yung standards. So, if there's a conflict between the conceptual framework and PFRS, the PFRS will prevail. So, kahit yung conceptual framework, ulitin lang natin, is para siyang constitution. Kapag may conflict siya with the PFRS, with the accounting standards, the accounting standards will prevail. Because, bakit sir? Kasi most of the time, kasi itong PFRS, ng accounting standards it provides a more distinct a more narrow a more narrow interpretation guideline so since it provides a narrow specific guideline mas maganda na i-follow na yung PFRS yung accounting standards itself as opposed sa following the conceptual framework kasi ang conceptual framework masyado siyang broad o masyado siyang generalized so pag kaya, mas magandang gamitin yung PFRS, yung accounting standards, kapag may conflict over the conceptual framework, kasi ulitin natin, the, the accounting standards provides a more specific, a more narrowed down interpretation and guideline on how to report. Kaya, mas preferred gamitin ang accounting standards. In this case, sa bansa natin, PFRS. Now, ito, gaya na, nasabi din natin to kanina, In the absence of a standard, the management shall consider the conceptual framework in making its judgment in developing and applying an accounting policy that results in useful information. Tapos, crypto mining, cryptocurrency, paano tinireport? Masyadong bago yan. No? Wala pa tayong standards para dyan. So in that case, pwede kang pumunta sa conceptual framework, tingnan mo kung anong guidelines meron dyan. Oo, kasi broad yung ano niyan eh. Broad yung sakop ni conceptual framework eh. So, makakuha ka dyan ng guideline on how to report the cryptocurrency operations the crypto mining nyo. Ganun. Ngayon, ano yung sakop? Ano yung scope ng conceptual framework? Now, the conceptual framework is concerned with the general purpose financial reporting. The general purpose financial reporting involves the, no, the preparation of general purpose financial statements. Ito, napag-usapan naman natin ito sa previous, ano, eh, previous lecture video. Now, the conceptual framework provides the concepts regarding the following. Yung objective ng financial reporting. Yung mga qualitative characteristics of useful financial information, financial statements, and the reporting entity, the elements of the FS, recognition and derecognition, measurement, presentation, disclosure, concept of capital, and capital maintenance. Ngayon, sa mga to, let's go to the ano. To the objective of the general purpose financial reporting. Now, yung per, yung objective daw ng ano ng GPFP, GPL, GPFR, is to provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to primary users in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. Yun yung purpose niya. Eh. Kaya nakalaga general purpose primary users. Kasi bakit? Itong mga users na to, hindi yung mga drug user, itong mga primary users na to, siyempre, before sila gagawa ng decision, dapat inform sila. Dapat inform sila. Before sila mag-provide ng resources to the entity, whether investor man yan or creditor. Kasi di ba ang investor, investment ang inaano niyan. So sa equity, ang creditor, nagpapautang yan. So sa liability ng company mo pupunta. Kaya providing resources. Ngayon, of course, they need to be informed before they make a decision. Diba? Pinag-usapan natin sa lecture video, gaano kaalaga ang informed decision making. So, they need to, ano? So, paano sila magiging informed? So, the company, since gusto ng company, gusto ng entity, na meron silang resources para magamit nila sa business activity nila, siyempre, magpo-provide sila ng 
information kay primary users para gamitin ng primary users sa kanilang decision making kung mag invest ba sila, kung magpo-provide ba sila ng resources sa entity. So, yan yung objective ng general purpose financial reporting. Now, with that said, yung objective ng general purpose financial reporting forms the foundation of the conceptual framework. Yung provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful, take note, that is useful to primary users in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. That forms the foundation ng conceptual framework kasi yan man yung end goal eh. Yan talagang end goal. Primary users, they need to be informed when making decisions. Paano sila magiging informed? In regards to the company? In regards to the entity? Bigyan mo ng financial reporting. Bigyan mo ng financial information. And from that financial information, magiging informed yung mga primary users. Magiging informed sila. Kung gusto nila yung nakikita nila, eh di mag invest yan. Eh di magpapabay dyan ng resources. Now, let's go to primary users. Sir, sino-sino ba yung primary users na yan? Yung mga primary users, these are the users that cannot demand information directly from the reporting entities. Kung, kung saan, sino, sila sila yung mga existing and potential investor, lenders, and other creditors. Sir, so, may mga users ba na pwedeng mag-demand ng information directly? Oo, management users. Since sila yung nagpapatakbo ng company, so they can demand. Oh, accounting in, accounting division. Bigyan mo nga kami ng information in regards to the financial uh, financial situation ng ating company. The management can demand that kasi sila nagpapatakbo ng company. Oh. Another user that can demand directly, the government. The government has regulatory powers. So since the government has regulatory powers, pwede sila mag-demand sa, oy, parang may kapapalagang nangyari dyan. Ah. Provide us with this information. Lalo sa taxes, oh, they can, ano, they can order or the government has ordered the company na kung saan yung pag-report nila for their tax purposes is tax basis. O yan, madadaanan yun sa ano, mada, meron yun sa financial reporting. Uh, kalimutan ko anong standard yan, pero uh, when it comes to paying taxes, when it comes to reporting to the government, from accounting basis, kumaga uh, kino-convert natin yan to tax basis. Merong standard yan, past 20 tata yun. Yung income tax ata yan, nakalimutan ko yung specific kung past 28 ba yun, PAS 28. Pero magano yan, from accounting basis, convert mo to tax basis, meron ganyan. Meron, meron tayong ganyan sa financial reporting. So yun, those are the users that can demand directly. But in this case, these primary users, they cannot demand information directly. So you need to provide them with the general purpose financial reporting. Uh, financial reporting, the general purpose financial statements para ma-inform ma sila. Now, take note, only the common needs of primary users are met by the financial statements. Di ba, as we have said, yun yung nangyayari sa general purpose financial statements. You provide information that is based on the common needs of the majority of the users. Di ba? Kaya nga, general purpose eh. Hindi specific purpose. General purpose kasi you need to provide the common needs common needs. Now, let's go to the qualitative characteristics. Now, ito. Ito yung usually yung pambungad na question sa mga board exam questions when it, when it comes to FAR. Yung qualitative characteristics. So, if I were you, familiarize, familiarize yourself with this. Ito yung mga pambungad na question when it comes to the board exam. Yung relevance, what is faithful representation, what is the difference between these? Oh, oh promise. So, let's go. Qualitative, qua characterist qualitative characteristics. So, may dalawa tayo dyan. Una, si fundamental qualitative characteristics. Ang pangalawa, si enhancing qualitative characteristics. Kung saan, under kay fundamental, si relevance at faithful representation. Dito naman sila. Ito naman under kay enhancing qualitative characteristics. Now, from the word fundamental, kung isi-search nyo yan sa ano, internet, kung anong definition yan, it is basically mean, it, 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 is basic, it basically means that it is the foundation, it is the basis, it is the core of the concepts, of the principles. Kaya nga, fundamental. 
it is the basis. It is the base. So in this case, the fundamental qualitative characteristics, these are the characteristics that make information useful to users. Information useful to users. So, so puhugot ka sa basis para gawin mong useful yung information sa, use, sa users. Pagdating naman sa enhancing qualitative characteristics, ang enhancing, basically other word dyan is, is improvement. Ayusin mo, pagandahin mo, enhance mo, di ba? improvement. So the enhancing qualitative characteristics, ang, these are the characteristics that enhances the usefulness of the information. So si fundamental, it makes information that is useful. Si enhancing, nandiyan ang information. Let's, say, let's make it more useful. Let's improve its usefulness. So tandem yan silang dalawa. Ngayon, di ba? Kita nyo dito, relevant speed for representation under kay fundamental. Oh, minsan ginagawa pa ng graph. Yung fundamental, dito si qualitative, tapos ganun-ganun. No? Relevant, speed for representation, kay enhancing apat agad. Tapos under kay relevant, predictive, or feedback, tapos yung isa, kay faithful, completeness, neutrality, prepam error. So, ito kay relevance tayo. Now, since we're talking about fundamental and about making information useful to the users, ano tong relevance? Ngayon, nasabi dito, tutulog ang pusa ko sa ilalim. Ngayon, nasabi dito, information is relevant. Is relevant kapag it can affect the decision of the user. It can affect the decision of the user. Meaning yan, Here's the information. Titingnan mo from the perspective of the user. Pag nakita ba to ng user tong information na to, will it affect its decision? For example, ah, tawag dito. For example, nakita mo masyadong mataas yung liabilities ng company mo. Oo, masyadong mataas yung liabilities ng company mo. Now, titingnan mo yung now, you will look into that information, into that massive amount of liability from the perspective of the users. So, tingnan mo, ala, mukhang hindi magiging maganda ang itsura. Oo, ang perception ng user sa company ko. Kasi, ala, ang laki ng liability. So, yan. Now, you will now consider that information relevant. Kasi, kita mo from the perspective of the user, it can affect how the user will look into the, uh, how the company will look into the eyes of the user. Ano magiging tingin ng user sa company mo? Ay, sabi mo, masyado mong mataas ang liability ng company na to. Medyo delix, medyo delikado tayo dito. Yun. Tsaka lang, nagiging relevant ang information, ulitin natin, if it can affect the decision of the user. So, yan. Ngayon, relevant information has the following. The predictive value and the confirmatory value. The predictive value and the confirmatory value. Sa predictive value, the information can be used in making prediction. Kay confirmatory, from the word sa confirm, confirm, ganun, di ba? The information can be used in confirming past prediction. So, paano natin na-apply? Let's say, uh, manufacturer ng, ng meat yung company. So, looking into the past financial information ng company, nakita nyo na every Christmas season, tumataas yung sale nila ng mamon. Anong mamon, sir? Nang hamon. Yeah? Tumataas every Christmas season. So, from, this, from those past financial information, magkagawa ka ngayon ng prediction na, okay, in this Christmas season of the year 2021, tataas ulit ang sale ng hamon ng company. That's the predictive value. You're using past information to make predictions. Ngayon, let's go to confirmatory value. Diyan sa confirmatory value, the information can be used in confirming past predictions. Now, here comes Christmas season 2021. Prinesent na sa'yo yung information. Nakita mo, oy, yung past prediction ko, natataas yung hamon sales ng company. Nagkatotoo. Confirm. Confirmatory value. 
Ngayon, materiality. Ito, napag-usapan natin sa previous lecture video. Ano itong materiality? Ulitin lang natin. Ang materiality, it is basically, talks about how important, how significant, a certain, uh, a certain thing to a company. Materiality. Gaano kahalaga itong bagay na to sa company? If it is very mahalaga to the company, then it is material. If it is not mahalaga, it is not very important, then it is considered to be immaterial. Ngayon itong materiality, mas makikita nyo yung sense nito, yung importance nito pagdating yung sa auditing promise. Yan yan. Materiality concept, etc. Et Ngayon, ang materiality is an entity-specific aspect of relevance. Di ba napag-usapan natin ito? Yung sa past, ano natin? Sa past lecture video. Big company, multi-billion dollar company. If there's a 1 million peso law sa sales, then immaterial yan sa kanila. Multi-billion sila eh. Packet change lang yung 1 million sa kanila. So, entity specific for them, a 1 million loss, since they're a multi-billion dollar company. Oh, loss in shipment, parang ganun. Immaterial yan sa kanila. Hindi significantly important. Pero, sabihin natin, sa isang karinderya, nagkaroon lang ng 1,000 peso loss. Oo, loss sa mga merchandise nila. Hindi nila alam saan napunta ba. Kinain ng anak nila o may nagnakaw. Now, for that sari-sari store, that 1,000 peso loss is material because it is significant and it is specific. Oh. Sari-sari store yan, magkaroon ka 1,000 peso loss. Oo, loss in merchandise, material yan para sa sari-sari store na yun. O, di ba? Kaya entity specific yan eh. It depends on what entity. Now, let's go to faithful representation. Atong faithful representation, hindi ito jowa mo. Never naging faithful sa'yo. Ligawan stage lang yan. So, itong faithful representation, it means the information provides a true, correct, and complete depiction, depiction of what it purports to represent. Oh, hindi talaga ito jowa mo. Oh, true, correct, and complete depiction of what it purports to represent. Kaya nga, faithful representation, you're presenting. What is true? Kung ano yung totoo? Kung ano yung katotohanan? Ngayon, faithful representation, uh, faithfully represented information has the following. Completeness, neutral, neutral, neutrality, and free from error. Now, itong sa completeness, all information necessary for users to understand the phenomenon being depicted is Provided, ibig sabihin, hindi ka nag-omit, hindi ka nagtanggal ng mahalagang information because once you omit that, then you're not faithfully representing the information. Hindi na siya complete, incomplete na siya. Kasi, oh, all information necessary for users to understand the phenomenon. Kailangan ni present po yan lahat kung ano yung necessary for the users to understand. Kasi pag nag-omit ka dyan, ng necessary information, then baka mag-iba yung interpretation ng user. Like for example, sa liabilities, nagtanggal ka ng malaking liabilities. Tinanggal mo. Oh, tinanggal mo. So ang isipin ng users, uy, ah, ganda nito. Hindi masyadong matas ang liability ng company. Where in fact, matas pala yung liability ng company. So from that omission, from that incompleteness of the information, magkakaroon ng alteration sa interpretation ng user. So, faithfully represented, you need to be complete. Neutrality information is selected or presented without bias. Ibig sabihin, walang kinikilingan, walang pinoprotektahan information na katotohanan lamang. Hindi mo, ah, since gusto ko yung market na to, ito lang yung ipepresent ko. Kasi dito ah, like for example, ano ba maganda? Uh, ano ba yung mall doon? City Mall. Oh, hindi nila ipapakita yung, yung City Mall overall sa Pilipinas. Hindi nila ipapakita yung City Mall. Yung operations ng City Mall from Zamboanga. Kasi medyo hindi maganda yung operations sa City Mall Zamboanga. Hindi nila ipapresent. Ipapresent lang nila kung ano yung, oh, para may connection sa completeness. No? Ipapresent lang nila kung ano yung information na magpapapogi sa kanila. Na, paano yan? Hindi na yung neutrality. O, in, in effect mo, na, um, nag-allow mo na yung completeness, hindi ka pa neutral. Kasi, present mo lang kung ano yung mas magpapapogi sa'yo. Hindi ganun. Present mo. 
without bias. Kung ano yung katotohanan. And lastly, free from error. There are no errors in the description in the process by which the information is selected and applied. Ibig sabihin, as much as possible, ka magkamali sa pag-present ng information. Ayun, let's go to the second, ano, to the second qualitative characteristics which is the enhancing. Enhancing, ulitin natin, nag improve nagpapa-improve, pinapaganda. Miss, mas ginagawang useful. Now, ito sa enhancing qualitative characteristics, as we have said, may apat tayo. Si comparability, comparability, si verifiability, timeliness, and si understandability. Ngayon, ito sa comparability, 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 The information helps users in identifying similarities and differences between different sets of information. Ibig sabihin, yung users natin, may chances talaga na i-compare nila yan, ibabangga nila yan, yung mga information na prinisen sa kanila. Like for example, yung 2020 FS ng company, or let's say 2019 na lang, yung 2019 FS ng company, ibabanggain ng user sa 2020 FS nila. Titingnan nila kung nagkaroon ba ng improvements dito. Tumaas bank sales, ano nangyari sa liabilities, anong mga assets na nabenta. Ganyan ang gagawin ng users eh. They need to compare that para makita nila if there are changes, if there are improvements, or baka nadedehado o yung company. Yun yung titingnan ng users. If there are improvements or nagdedecline yung company, they will compare that. Another way to do that is to compare ah, uh, tawag dito, is to compare the FS of different companies of the same industry. Titingnan nila, oh, si Jollibee, o si McDonald's, papano tong operation sila based on this information. Sino yung mas nakakalamang, si Jollibee ba o si McDonald's? Ganon, comparability. Comparability. Now, take note, you can only properly compare Set of information, if they have the same nature, papano? Wag mo ko compare yung FS ni Honda sa FS ni Jollibee. Ibang industries yan sila. Anong makik Siyempre, ang makikita mo lang ni Jan is the differences between the two. Mali yun. Iko-compare mo si Honda kay Toyota sa kotse nila. Yeah? Sa car manufacturing ano nila. Iko-compare mo si Jollibee kay McDonald's. So yan. Para you will properly compare. Oo. Next is verifiability. Different users could reach consensus as to what the information purports to represent. Like for example, sa news, nakita mo itong isang article provides this specific information. Now, medyo doubtful ka. So, titingnan ka sa ibang articles. If the other articles is reporting on the same information, then from that, you can say na it is verified that what? the first article has provided is totoo or it is wha what is really happening. Verify, baby. You can verify. You can make sure na totoo yung nababasa mo. Oh? In this case, could reach a consensus as to what the information purpose to represent. Like, for example, may consensus yung mga users na, uy, mukhang nagde-decline yung company. Sabi ng isang user, oo nga, no? Ganyan rin nakikita ko. Sabi ng isang user, oo nga, no? Ganyan rin nakikita ko. Verify mo. Third is timeliness. The information is available to users in time to be able to influence their decision. Meaning kung kailangan ng financial information at this specific time in order for it to properly influence the decisions. And it dapat available na by that time. Kasi pag lumampas yan, then magiging obsolete niyang information na yan. Kasi hindi na magagamit ng user. Oo. Pag sabi ng user, oh gusto namin, by March 31, sana may FS na kayo. Kasi gusto na namin mag-invest eh. May available kaming pera. Gusto na namin mag-invest. Eh kaso, lumampas ang March 31, wala pang na-provide si company na na, tawag dito, na FS, na financial information. Nasa ngayon si user, Aba, wala kayo. Tagal yung magbigay ng, info, ng financial information. Doon na lang sa kabilang company mag-invest. Kasi nakaprovide na sila ng magandang information, ng financial information na maaga eh. Oh. 
kasi yung binigay bibigay mo ng ano yung financial information mo obsolete na hindi na magagamit ang user and lastly understandability users are expected to have reasonable knowledge of business activities and willingness to analyze the information diligently from the word itself understandability ngayon isipin mo pag i-present mo yung FS mo yung financial information mo sa users maintindihan ba nila kasi tingnan mo from the perspective of the users o baka ito yung mga users na mga ordinaryong tao so mas simplihan mo o ito yung mga users na at the very least may is knowledgeable about reading financial statements then ganun na gawin mo tansyahin mo kumbaga now let's go to financial statements and the reporting entity or and the reporting entity now the objective and scope of the FS so ano ba tong objective ano ba tong sakop ng financial statements. Now, the objective of general purpose financial statements, ito na mention naman dito sa last lecture video, is to provide financial information about the reporting entities' assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses that is useful in assessing the entity's ability to generate future net cash inflows and the management stewardship over economic resources. So yan yung ano eh, yan yung objective ng GPFS. Makapag-provide ng F ng financial information in regards to the asset, in regards to the liabilities, in regards to the equity, in regards to the income and expenses. Na kung saan from that financial information, magagamit mo siya in order to assess kung yung entity ba ano yung ability niya sa pag-generate ng future net cash inflows. Meaning ba yan? Yung net cash inflows ba ng company, as the time passes, tumataas ba? O baka nagdi-decline yan? Secondly, management stewardship over economic resources. How efficient? How? Gaano kagaling? Alimutan ang English yan. How efficient? Gaano kagaling yung management when it comes to managing? the economic resources available at their disposal. Kung paano nila yung ginagamit in order to generate increase in net cash inflows and other benefits to the company. Increase in sales, increase in valuation of the stocks ng entity. Ganun. Paano nila ginagamit yung economic resources para sa benefits ng company. Yan. Financial information. From that financial information, ina-assess mo tong dalawa. Now, ito ang discuss natin reporting period. The yung FS daw, it is preferred, preferred, prepared for specific period of time. Tawag natin dyan, the reporting period. And it includes comparative information for at least one preceding reporting period. Uy na. Oo, kasi pag makikita nyo yung mga FS na pinipresent, meron dyan yung current, ano, current, current reporting period. Then sa side nyan, nandyan yung previous reporting period, previous previous reporting period or meron pa apat yung pinipresente tatlong preceding reporting isang current alam nga isa lang talagang current so yan minsan oh, pero at least one daw at least isa bakit? para makompare mo uy ano to tumataas ba ang asset ang company? lumulobo ba ang liability niya? titingnan mo rin uy tumataas ba ang sales revenue ng company? tumataas ba ang expenses niya? tumataas ba ang net income niya? Yan, comparative information. Kino-compare mo from its past reporting period para makita mo may progress ba? Nag-decline ba ang company? Ito, going concern na pag-usapan na rin natin. So, financial statements are normally prepared on the assumption that the reporting entity is a going concern. Meaning, yung entity has neither the intention nor the need to end, to end its operations in the foreseeable future. Meaning, ang assumption dyan, yung company, company, yung company, In the foreseeable future, mag-ooperate pa rin yan in its normal business activity. Kasi pag wala na yun ang going concern, iba na yung pag-value. Value. Iba na yung pag-report natin sa entity. Liquidating concern na yun. Iba na, realizable value ng ginagamit natin. Hindi na yung typical standard. Kaya going concern, napakalaga yan. Kasi nag-iiba yung financial reporting natin, yung pag-provide natin ng financial information in regards to the company, kapag hindi na going concern. So, tingnan mo, itong company ba? Mababankrap ba ito within the foreseeable future? 
magsisis ba ang operations ito within a foreseeable future? Tingnan nyo, i-assess nyo. Ngayon, talking about yan, no? Oh, the reporting entity, it is one that is required or chooses to prepare financial statements and is not necessarily a legal entity. It can be a single entity or group or combination of two or more entities. Tawag natin yung consolidation. So, read further sa book. Ngayon, ito yung elements of financial statements na mention naman natin dito. So, ano ito sila? The elements of the financial statements are the following. Si asset, si liability, si equity, si income, and si expenses. So, ano na to sila? Didiscussin natin sa next slides. Don't worry. Ngayon, itong si assets, itong si liabilities, itong si equity. This relates to the entity's financial position. Ano yung current financial position ng entity? Makikita natin to sila sa statement of financial position, obviously. Statement of financial position. Itong si income and expenses, this relates to the entity's financial performance. How well is the per, is the entity performing? Makikita mo sa kanila financial per, per, performance. Now, you can see this. Makikita natin ito si income and expenses, ha? statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Or also known as the income statement lang, yung simple term niya. Pero yung proper term, statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Ito, tawag din natin, is the balance sheet. Pero yung proper term is the statement of financial position. Ngayon, let's talk about asset. Ito, familiar naman kayo. Sama lalo sa mga ABM students and sa non-ABM since dumaan na kayo sa FAR. Di ba? So, ito, ano tong asset? According to conceptual framework 4.3 and 4.4, an asset is a present economic resource controlled by the entity as a result of a past event. An economic resource is a right. That has the potential to produce economic benefits. So yan, tatandaan yan. Yan yung magiging, tawag ito, yan yung definition ng asset. And from this definition, may tatlong aspects yan. Ito. Three aspects in the definition of an asset. Si right, si potential to produce economic benefits, and si control. O ito. Present economic resources controlled. That is result as a past event kung saan itong economic resource na to, May karapatan ka dyan. The potential as result as the potential to produce economic benefits. Okay. So, ano itong right? From the definition alone, right is an entitlement to something. Di ba? Ganyan yung basic definition ng right. Right is basically the entitlement to something. In this case, the entitlement over the asset. You have an entitlement over the asset. May karapatan ka over that asset. Asset refers to a right not, and not necessarily to a physical object. For example, the right to use the asset, the right to sell it, the right to lease it, and the right to transfer a building or transfer a building. So yan na, right, entitlement to something ang meaning yan. Now let's go to potential to produce economic benefits. Now bakit nga ba at the first place hina, pinangawakan mo yung asset na yan? Reason, potential to produce economic benefits. The right has a potential to produce economic benefits for the entity that are beyond the benefits available to all others. Such potential need not to be certain or even likely. What is important is that the right already exists and that it, at least in one circumstances, it produces economic benefits for the entity. Yan yung reason bakit pinangawakan mo yung karapatan mo over the asset. Kasi you are, ano, you are expecting in the future na yung asset na yan magbibigay ng inflow ng economic benefit sa entity, sa company. Like for example, bumili ka ng inventory. Ah, well, control muna tayo. Control. It means that the entity has the exclusive right over the benefits of an asset. Tanda nyo, exclusive right over the benefits of an asset and the ability to prevent others from accessing those benefits. Meaning yung benefits na marireceive niya, yung potential to produce economic benefits over the asset, siya kanya lang, siya kanya lang, siya kanya lang. Hindi niya iyan isi-share sa iba. Siya lang yung magiging recipient ng benefit na yan. Siya lang. So yan, right, potential to produce economic benefits, control. Anong example niya? Inventory. Bumili ka ng inventory para magbenta. Now, binili mo yung inventory. So may right ka, may entitlement ka over that inventory. You have the right to use that inventory kung gusto mong gamitin para sa personal ano mo or ibenta yan. Entitled ka eh. Sa'yo yan. Ngayon, bakit mo binili yung inventory na yan? 
because you know that in the future, may economic benefits na papasok sa'yo from that inventory. Yun yung ano eh, kaya mo binili yan eh. Kasi in this case, ibebenta mo o pag ibebenta mo yan, may benefit ka dyan. Ngayon, control. Ngayon, pag nabenta mo yung, kapag nabenta mo yung inventory na yan, si, yung kapitbahay mo ba, marireceive niya rin yung benefits from that sale? Hindi. Ikaw lang. You have the exclusive right over the benefits because you have control over the inventory. So yan, asset. Inventory, asset yan, di ba? PAS2 yan. Philippine Accounting Standard 2 yan. Inventory. So you have the right You have the entitlement over that inventory. You can sell that inventory because it is yours. Potential to produce economic benefits. Kapag binenta mo yung inventory na yan, sa'yo yan. Yung economic benefits yan, marireceive mo. Kaya mo yung pinanghawakan at the first place kasi alam mong may economic benefits yan. And lastly, may control ka over that. Kapag binenta mo yan, kapag nareceive mo yung economic benefits, ikaw lang yung exclusive recipient ng economic benefits na yun. That is an asset. So take note, huwag nang kalimutan definition ng asset. Now let's go to liability. Now itong si liability, basically sa yung opposite ng asset eh. So sabi dito, according to conceptual framework 4.26, liability is a present obligation of the entity to transfer an economic resource as a result of passive events. So yan. Same sa asset, from its definition, you can only see the aspects of the liability. Obligation. O, outward transfer of economic resources that is based on past events. Obligation. Diba? Sa asset, you have the right. You have the entitlement. Pagdating sa obligation, uh, pagdating sa liability, you have the obligation. You have the duty. O, diba? Parang passive, ano? Diba? Parang passive subject and active subject yung sa obligation natin. Obligation. An obligation is a juridical The joke lang. According to CF 29, 4.29, an obligation is a duty or responsibility that an entity has no practical ability to avoid. Di ba? Passive subject siya. Oh, di ba? Sa obligon. So it is the duty of the res- or the responsibility that an entity has no practical ability to avoid. So kailangan niyang gawin yan eh. Kailangan niyang panagutan yan. Now an obligation can either be legal or constructive obligation. Oh, pang basa niyo yung book niyo, basically, ang legal obligation It arises from contracts, uh, legislation, and other forms of and other forms of operation of law. Big sabihin, stated talaga explicitly na gagawin mo tong obligation na to. Yan si legal obligation. When it comes to constructive obligation, ang basis mo yan is based on the past. Is based on the tag dito. Is based on the past activities. Based on kung ano yung pinagagawa ng company in the past. Oo, yan yung constructive obligation. Based on the past actions of the companies, you can perceive na kapag nangyari yung certain event na to, pananagutan niya nila. For example, warranties, kung hindi yan stated sa explicitly stated, pero pananagutan, based on their past actions, pananagutan niya nila. Constructive obligation yun. Based on the entity's activities. Kung paano nila ginagawa yung operations nila, then you can perceive, you can say na in the future, pananagutan nila yung obligation na yan. Second aspect is the transfer of economic resources. Now, di ba? Sa asset, you will have the potential to receive an economic benefit. In this case, pagdating sa liability, outward na transfer of economic resource. The obligation has the potential to require the transfer of an economic resource to another party. Such potential need not to be certain or even likely. What is important is that the obligation already exists and that at least in one circumstance, it would require the transfer of an economic resource. So yan, because, uh, kaya nga, liability, you are liable. So may outward transfer of economic resource yan. And lastly, present, obli- present obligation na as a, as a result of past event. Because, meaning, because of a past event, nagkaroon ka ng present obligation. A present obligation exists as a result of past event if the entity has already obtained economic benefits or taken an action and as a consequence, the entity will or may have to transfer an economic resource that it would not otherwise have had to transfer. For example, utang, loan. 
or accounts payable or sabihin natin loan, nangutang ka sa banko. So, since nangutang ka sa banko, you now have the duty or responsibility na bayaran yung utang mo. O in that case, since nangutang ka sa banko, so normally, meron yung ano, may kontrata yan. So, consider that sa legal obligation. Uh, that identity has no practical ability to avoid. Kailangan mo bayaran ng utang mo. So, example nga ng constructive obligation, usually sa warranties to eh. Sa warranties or environmental damages. Kung saan yung entity, walang nakadamage siya sa environments or sa waran- or wala siyang specific provisions for warranty sa kontrata niya, sa sales, ano niya. Pero, because of its past, ano, past actions or may expectation sa company na panagutan yung obligation na yun. Constructive obligation. Now, balik tayo sa loan. With that, nangutang ka. So, since nangutang ka, kailangan mo pagbayaran yun. Kailangan mo bayaran yun in the future. So, in the future, pag dumating na yung due date, oh, there's an outward transfer of economic resource kasi kailangan mo bayaran yung utang na yun. Ngayon, yung utang na yan is a present obligation. Bakit? As a result of a passive event. Anong passive event yun? Nangutang ka sa banko eh. Kasi kailangan mo ng additional investment. Kailangan mo ng additional capital. So, nangutang ka sa banko. Result of a passive event. Nangutang ka previously sa banko na kung saan you have now the present obligation to pay for that. The entity has already obtained ben- economic benefits or taken an action. Oh, nareceive mo na yung pera eh. Nareceive mo na yung ano sa banko. Oh, economic benefits yan. Now, let's go to executory contracts. So, ano itong executory contracts? Dalawa kasi yan eh. May tinatawag tayong executory contract. May tinatawag tayong executed contract. O, di ba? Kita nyo na agad yung difference. Executory, executed. Hindi yung, ha? Executed. Ibig sabihin, nagawa na, finish na. Ang executory, wala pa. Hindi pa significantly nagagawa. So, sabi dito, according to CF 4.56, an executory contract is a contract daw that is equally unperformed by the parties. Ibig sabihin, dalawang parties sa isang contract, hindi pa nila nagagawa yung kanilang obligation. Yung required nilang gawin. Neither party has fulfilled any of its obligation or in, in some cases, both parties have partially fulfilled their obligations to an equal extent. But usually, this partial fulfillment is insignificant, mga ganun yan. So, yan yung executory contract according to, conceptual, according to the conceptual framework. Ngayon, when the parties have already fulfilled their, ano, their obligations, tawag na doon is executed contract. Oh, ang executory, wala pa. Executed, boom, finish na. Now, an executory contract establishes a combined right and obligation to exchange economic resources. Example, sales. Yeah? Ikaw, may inventory ka, seller ka. Yung isa, si buyer. May pangbayad siya. So ngayon, this executory contract establishes a combined right and obligation to exchange economic resources. Ikaw, na seller, siyempre gusto mo na ano eh, pera. May inventory ka. So, yung right mo, tawag ito, yung right mo para makatanggap ng pera, pambayad ni buyer. Yung obligation mo, i-transfer mo yung inventory mo. Yun sa perspective ni seller. Sa perspective ni buyer, gusto niya ng inventory. May pera siya. So, yung right niya to receive the inventory, obligation niya, bayaran yun. So, an executory contract establishes a combined right and obligation to exchange economic resources. Oh, ganun, yeah? The contract ceases to be executory when one party performs its obligation. Oh, let's say for example, nagbayad na si, si buyer. Bina, full payment na siya. Inaabangan niya na lang yung uh, ma-receive yung inventory. Na-receive na ni seller yung, ano, eh, yung full payment. So in that case, ano mangyayari? If the entity performs first, meaning si buyer nagbayad na agad, the entity's combined right and obligation changes to an asset. Meaning, wala na, hindi na combined right, ah, hindi na ano, hindi na combined right and obligation. Kasi nagawa niya yung obligation niya eh. So, right na lang. So, since right na lang yan, asset. No, di ba? Since right na lang yan, asset. Expect niya na, na ma-release yung inventory. May, yun na lang eh. May karam, yun na lang yan natitira eh. 
na ba- nagawa niya yung obligation niya, nabayaran niya na full payment. So, tanggal ng obligation, right na lang meron, asset. Ngayon, if the other party performs first, if the other party performs first, the entities combine itong obligation changes to a liability. Meaning, for example, perspective ni buyer ulit. Si seller, pinadala na yung inventory. Pero ikaw, buyer, hindi mo pa binabayaran. Si seller, pinadala na yung inventory. Ikaw, buyer, hindi mo pa binabayaran. So, ano yan? Dito, ang right ni buyer, di ba, is to receive the inventory. Ang obligation niya, bayaran yon. Now, in this case, since yung right ni buyer to receive the inventory, nangyari na, okay, tanggal na to. Ang natira na lang, yung obligation niyang bayaran yon. So, since obligation na lang yung natira, oh, liability. Oh, well, analysis lang yan. Now, let's go to equity. So, si equity, basically, ang ano sa kanya is residual niya. Yan yung nature niya. Equity is the residual interest in the assets of the entity after deducting all of its liability. Yan yung nature niya na eh. Nature ni equity. Residual lang. Kung anong matira? Kung anong matira? After deducting the levies from the assets, equity yun. So, may instances ba? Na yung liabilities mas mataas sa asset? Oo, marami yun. Yan yung mga na-bankrupt na, yung mga insolvent na. Oo, yun yung mga na-bankrupt na, insolvent na. May tatawag tayo natin dyan, negative equity. Parang ganun. Pero later on, sa intermediate accounting nyo. Ngayon, equity equals assets minus liabilities. Basta yung accounting equation lang yan. Don't forget. Paglaruan nyo lang yun. Asset equals liabilities plus, plus owner's equity. Ngayon, let's go to income and expenses. Sa income and expenses, as we have said, makikita to sa statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Uy, ba't ka pumasok? Statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So, si income, this in, uh, according to CF 4.68, income is increases in assets or decreases in liabilities. That results in increases. That, with this, Ah, uh, it al uh, bubulo tayo. That result in increases in equity other than those relating to the contributions from holders of equity claims. Ganun so, gains and loss, uh, gains. Revenues and gains. So, increase in asset 'yan. O yung gains, tumata tumataas yung value ng asset mo. O tumataas yung value ng asset mo. Gains 'yan, decrease liability. Okay, good. So, that's result in increases in equity kasi 'di ba? Gaya na sabi natin. Assets, natung tayo. Assets minus liabilities equals to increases in equity. So dito kita nyo. Paglaruan nyo lang talaga yung accounting equation. No, Tiyan dito. Increase in asset. Decrease in liability. Effect nyan sa equity, mag-increase other than those relating to contributions from holders of equity claims. Meaning yung mga stockholders. So other from that, yun. Expenses naman, these are decreases in assets or increases in liabilities that results to decreases in equity. So, kita nyo, accounting equation ulit. Oh. Baba ang asset, taas ang liabilities, baba ang equity. Other than those relating to distributions to holders of equity claims. Now, let's go to the next topic, which is the recognition and derecognition. So, pang data lo, no? understandable naman, no meaning yan. Nire-recognize and dinederecognize. So, punta mo tayo sa recognition process. So, ano nga ba to? Uh, so, yung recognition daw, is, it is the process of including sinasama sa financial statement or sa statement of financial position or sa statement of financial performance. Other name dito is the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Kasi di, di ba dito? Sa statement of financial position, sinasama si asset liability and equity. Dito sa statement of financial performance or the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, dyan sinasama si income or expenses. So, sabi dito, ang recognition, this is the process of including sa mga statements na to, an item that meets the definition of one of the financial statement elements, i.e. yung asset, liability, equity, income, or expenses. Now, yun ang sabi, when an item meets the definition of one of these, manamit yung ano sa asset, namit yung definition ng liability, namit yung equity, namit sa income, namit or namit yung definition ng expenses, then, sabi dito, recognition, isasama mo, i-include mo sa statement, sa financial statement. 
Now, this involves in recording the item in words, sabi natin inventory, and in monetary amount, and including that amount in the totals of either of those statements. Oh yeah, sabi natin inventory, yun yung item in words mo, yun yung account name, yun yung account it- it- uh, item. In monetary amounts, lagay natin 1 million peso. Then, isasama mo yun sa pag-total. O, ibig sabihin nyo, inventory siya. So, isasama mo siya sa total assets. Ganun lang yun, di ba? Basta na-meet yung definition ng item, na-meet ng item yung definition ng isa sa mga elements, sama mo kapatid. Basically, ganun. Now, before that, may reco- may, so, of course, may criteria tayo. Kailan natin nire-recognize ang isang item? Provided naman eh. Una, stated naman before, di ba? It meets the definition of an asset. It meets the definition of liability, ng equity, ng income, or expense. And, meaning, oh, nakalagay dito, and, meaning, both dapat, both, both, both of them must be, uh, must be tawag dito, must be complied. Yun. Yung second, recognizing it would provide useful information, meaning, it complies with the relevant and faithful qualitative characteristics that represents information. Yung pinag-usapan natin kanina. So, you know, first it must meet the definition of one of the elements. Earth, fire, wind, water, di ba ganun? Of the, one of the elements. And kapag i-recognize mo siya, tingnan mo if it will provide useful information based on the qualitative characteristics gagamitin mong guideline yung qualita- qualitative characteristics, yung relevant and faithful representation, enhancement, tingnan mo, okay. Natansya mo, na-assess mo, okay. Pag isasama namin to, it will provide useful information. Huwag kang papucho-pucho dyan, kapatid. Now, ito, relevance. The recognition of an item may not provide relevant information if, for example, it is uncertain whether an asset or liability exists. Meaning, hindi kayo sure. Or an asset or liability exists, pero yung probability of an inflow or outflow of economic benefits, mababa. Ma-remote yung possibility, parang ganun. Or low possibility. However, take note, the presence of one or both of the foregoing, eto, does not automatically lead to the non-recognition of an item. Other factors should be considered. Oh, meron tayong tiyatawag na uh, provisions, contingent assets, and contingent liabilities na kung saan, oo, may mga items talaga na i-recognize mo kahit na medyo malabo yung possibility. O, past 37 na tayo ang, ta- ang tawag sa standard is the provisions, contingent assets, and contingent liabilities. Yun, isa yun sa mga standards na madali lang o promise. So, it is uncertain. Or... Now, Faithful representation, the level of measurement as uncertainty, and other factors can affect an item's faithful representation but not necessarily its relevance and measurement uncertainty. Now, measurement uncertainty exists if the asset or liability needs to be estimated. Ang kailangan mo pang estimate. A high level of measurement uncertainty does not necessarily mean that it will lead to a non-recognition of an asset or liability kung yung estimates naman na ginawa provides relevant information is clearly accurate and describe and explain. A good example of that is ano, employee benefits. Pagdating yung sa employee benefits, ngayon there are certain, ano, certain aspects under employment benefits. Eh, simplihan na lang natin yun kasi MPEN is one of the most difficult topics under financial accounting and reporting. Sa MPEN, may mga certain, ano eh, may mga certain aspects dyan na, na isang simpleng CPA, hindi niya kayang gawin. So, hihingi siya ng outside help. Ang tawag doon is yung pagano ng actuarial gains, actuarial losses. So, pupunta sa isang actuary. Actuary ata yung taw- tawang ten doon. So, si actuary, based on the factors, magkocompute yan siya. Specialized ano yan eh? Specialized job yan, yung actuarial. Yung actuarial gains, actuary, baka narinig nyo to sa news eh. Yung, o sa PhilHealth, sa SSS, di ba narinig yung mga actuary, actuary. Sila yung nagkocompute. Oo, magkano ang gagastos in the future based on the age of the ano, the age of the employees, ganun. Life expectancy, gaano sila katagal sa company yan. I igugrupo nila mga factors na yan. Tapos they will make estimations. So yun, those are certain difficult estimations. Ano, kapag ginawa ng isang accountant, 
Dehado yan. Hindi pucho-pucho yan. Kailangan expert ang gagawa ng estimation na yan. Para sure kayo na it is clearly and accurately described and explained that it provides relevant information yung estimation na yan. So that is a good example na kahit na estimated yan, pero pag ginawa yan ng expert, in this case sa MPEN, yung actuary, pag ginawa niya yan, then pwede yung i-recognize. Now, there are also certain instances na, however, measurement uncertainty can lead to the non-recognition of an asset or liability if making an estimate is exceptionally difficult or exceptionally subjective. Yeah? If you can still remember, cost-benefit analysis. Yeah? Cost-benefit. Kapag yung cost mo is mas mataas over the ben- na ma-incur mo, Ah, uh, tawag ito yung cost benefit analysis. If yung cost mo in getting that information is higher than the benefit you will get from that information, kukunin mo pa yung information na yun. Hindi na, di ba? Cost benefit. Yun na yun. Exceptionally difficult, exceptionally subjective. Huwag mo na isama. Huwag mo nang i-recognize. Ngayon, pinag-usapan natin recognition, di ba? Recognition basically including. The recognition, excluding, tinatanggal natin. So, the recognition is the removal of a previously recognized asset or liability from the entity's statement of financial position. The recognition occurs when the item ceases to meet the definition of an asset or liability. For example, may equipment ka. Asset yan. Yes, you have the right over the asset, entitled ka dyan. You have the control over the asset. Pero, wala nang potential for an inflow of economic benefits from that equipment kasi sobrang tanda na eh. O, oh, mahal na yung maintenance yan. Hindi na masyadong magamit. Hindi na masyadong efficient sa operations. So, yun. Wala nang potential for economic benefit kasi kailangan ng palitan eh. Wala nang benefits. So, yun. Idi-recognize mo na yung asset na yun. Kasi wala nang potential economic benefits. Now, with that, it ceases to meet the definition of an asset. Kasi wala nang potential inflow of economic benefits. So, yun. Ito the recognize mo na. So yan, recognition and the recognition. Now let's go to to simple lang to, unit of account it is yan oh. Is the right or the group is the right or the group of rights and the obligation or the group of obligations or the group of rights and obligations to which recognition criteria and measurement concepts are applied, etc etc. Ito measurement basis ito na da, na mention na rin natin sa previous lecture video. yung measurement basis. So, una, historical cost. Pangalawa, current value under sa kanya, fair value. Ah, fair value, value in use and fulfillment value and current cost. So, historical cost. Ah, tawag dito, the historical cost of an asset and liability sa asset. The historical cost of an asset is the consideration paid to acquire the asset plus the transaction cost. Meaning, kung magkano yung binayad mo, kung kailan mo na-acquire yung asset, yun yung historical cost niya. O example, yung equipment, yung truck, binili mo noong 2018 at the price of 5 million peso with the transportation cost of 50,000 peso para pang deliver. O, 5 billion 50, yun yung historical cost ng truck na yun, no? Kasi dito nakalagay ito, plus transaction cost. O, pagdating nyo sa ah, intermediate accounting, makikita nyo, pati not only the price of the asset, but also other cost that was incurred in acquiring that asset, isasama nyo. But not all cost that was expense in, uh, that was incurred in acquiring that asset will be part of its ano, price or ano, amount or value. Oo, not all. Yung iba, isasama mo sa value ng asset. Yung iba, hindi. Depende sa standards na madadaanan nyo. Oh, like sa inventory, o start yan sa inventory, then sa agriculture, o sa, lalo sa PPE, marami dyan. Sa, sa ang simplehan na lang natin, an asset is the consideration paid to acquire the asset. Sorry, gulo ka na naman. Baba. Uh, tawag dito, the consideration paid to acquire the asset plus the transaction cost. Kung ano yung mga, sabi ni standard, kung ano yung mga transaction cost na pwede mong isama. Not all of them pwede mong isama. Depende sa standard kung anong sasabihin niya. Pangalawa is the, uh, the historical cost of liability. 
is the consideration received to incur the liability minus transaction cost. So, pagdadaanan nyo rin yan pagdating sa intermediate accounting part 2. Oo, kasi part 1, to assets lang yan. Part 2, liabilities and equity yan. Part 3, other stops. Ngayon, historical cost is updated over time to depict the following. Ito, depreciation, amortization, and impairment. Ito, Bawa to depreciation based on the usage, babawas yung value ng asset, amortization, yung net carrying amount ng asset, babawas yan. Collection of payments that extinguishes part all, uh, that that extinguish part or all of the asset liability sa prepaid yan, prepaid payments, so unwinding of discount or premium when the asset or liability is measured at amortized cost. Yan, makikita nyo yan usually sa ano, liability, sa loans, sa debts. Ngayon, fair value, which is under the current value, ito, tandaan nyo rin tong definition ng fair value. Lalo sa, oh, lalo sa mga competition, ilang beses ito tinatanong. Anong fair value? Fair value is the price. Ito, pabago-bago meaning ito. Pero ngayon, fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. Yan yung definition ni fair value. Oh. The price, shh, baba, baba. Ba, ba, ba. Riri. Riri. Shh, shh. Wag ba dyan mahulog ang ano? Pabasa. Ba, ba. So, fair value, kalagay dito, the price that would be received to an asset, uh, to sell an asset, well, nawala tuloy tayo, the price that would be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer liability in an order transaction between the market participants at the measurement date. Yan yung basically, definition ng fair 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 value. Ngayon, sa value in use and fulfillment value, basically itong value in use, it pertains to the asset. Fulfillment value pertains to a liability. Kita nyo ah. Value in use, this is the present value of the cash flows or other economic benefits that an entity expects to be derived to derive from the use of an asset and from its ultimate disposal. Sa so, itong value in use, there are certain standards, uh, let's say sa PPE, na kung saan itong value in use nagagamit as a uh, determination of the value. Kung ano yung amount ng, tag dito, caring amount ng asset. Oo, nagagamit yan ng value in use. Sa PPE, makikita nyo yan. And sa non-current asset held for sale, nakikita rin nata yun. Oo, makikita nyo yung si value in use. Basically, intro lang itong ginagawa natin eh. Para pag napuntaan nyo na yung standard na yun, ala, oo, ito yung nasa intro na sana eh. Conceptual framework discussion namin. Oo, oh, lalabas yan sila si fair value, si historical cost. <laughs> ito naman si fulfillment value. This is the present value of the cash or other economic resources that an entity expects to be obliged to transfer as it fulfills a liability. Now, take note present value. Basically, Ang simple definition niyan is, yung 1 million mo sa future, yung 1 million peso sa future, ano yung value niya ngayon? Kaya present value, anong value niya ngayon? Basta mas madidiscuss niyan yan, lalo na pagdating yung sa ano, business matata yan, or sa match of investment yan, didiscuss yan siya, wala nang competition. Sa intermediate accounting, didiscuss yan yan. Pag, lalo na pagdating sa, sa liability, sa loans, so, and present value, yung competition, yung kita nyo parating tinataktak-tak pa ng mga accountants. Oo, yan yan, present value. Current cost. Ito naman current cost, an asset is the cost. The current cost of an asset is the cost of an equivalent asset at the measurement date comprising the consideration that would be paid at the measurement date plus the transaction that would be incurred at that date. Sa so liability naman is the consideration that would be received for an equivalent liability at the measurement date minus the transaction cost that would be incurred at that date. Now, parang may kapareha siya, no? Para siyang fair value. Kasi tingnan nyo, the cost of an equivalent asset at the measurement date comprising the consideration that would be paid at the measurement date plus the transaction cost that would be incurred at that date. Si fair value, the price that would be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. So, parang pareho sila, no? Kasi kung ano yung value, 
parang kung ano yung value sa measurement tape, yun yung gagamitin. Ang difference nila, take note of this, sa fair value, it talks about an exchange transaction. O, nagkaroon ng exchange transaction between the market participants. Yan si fair value. Fair value. Pagdating kay current cost, it talks about magkano yung babayaran mo in order to replace the asset. Para siyang replacement cost. Parang ganun. Si current, ano, si fair value, it talks about an exchange transaction between market participants. Magkano yung gusto nilang babayaran sa isa't isa? Yun si fair value. Pagdating kay current cost, yung sa kanya, ang iniisip lang, magkano yung babayaran in order to replace the asset, in order to replace the liability. Kung saan ang consideration mo is the cost of an equivalent asset at the measurement date. Yan yung difference ng dalawa. Uy, punta, punta tayo sa last, nag-end siya. So ngayon, Entry values, current cost and historical cost are entry values. They re reflect prices in acquiring an asset or incurring liability. Meaning parang acquisition yan. Uh, dito naman talaga acquiring. Pagdating naman kay fair value, value in use and fulfillment value or exit values, they reflect prices in selling or using an asset or transferring or fulfilling liability. Basta mas maintindihan, mas makita nyo sila. Pag nasa discussion ng standards, lalo sa intermediate accounting, nakita nyo yung computation, mas ma-appreciate nyo. Ano yun sa appreciate? Mas ma-understand nyo to. Ganun naman talaga sa accounting eh. Mas na-appreciate mo kapag in-depth discussion na siya, hindi lang basta-basta intro, kung saan nandiyan na yung computations. Oo, dyan si... Kasi itong conceptual framework for accounting standards, itong si FAS natin, tiris talaga to. Tiris of account talaga to. Saan tayo? So, considerations when selecting a measurement basis. So, when selecting a measurement basis, it is important to consider the following. Most of the time, kahit niya tingnan to, kung anong sinabi ng standard, kung paano mo siya measure follow mo lang yun. Parang ganun lang eh. Musabat ganun talaga eh. Sabi ni standard, okay. Historical cost mo to. Okay, fair value mo to. Just follow the standard. So, sabi dito, when selecting a measurement basis, it is important to consider the following. The nature, of, or, or, the nature of information provided by a particular measurement basis. Meaning, uh, example given, measuring an asset at historical cost may lead to the subsequent recognition of depreciation or impairment while measuring an asset at fair value would lead to the subsequent recognition of gain or loss from changes in fair, fair value. Just follow the standard. Kung anong sabi niya paano measure tong item na to, that falls under that standard, ah? just follow that. The qualitative characteristics, the cost constraints, and the other factors, example given, a particular measurement basis may be more ver verifiable or more costly to apply than other measurement basis. Ito, measurement of equity, basically, hindi mo ma-measure si equity directly. Bakit? Kasi gaya na sabi natin, residual siya. Kung anong matira, yun si equity. It is simply equal to the difference between the total asset and total liabilities. Now, because of different measurement basis are used for different asset liabilities, total equity cannot be expected to be equal to the entity's market value nor the amount that can be raised from either selling or liquidating the entity. Huh? Kung ano, just because, like fa for example, si Tesla, just because hundreds of billions yung market value ng ano niya, stocks niya, it does not necessarily mean ay yung value ng equity niya. Oo, kasi yung value ng stocks niya sa market, depende yan sa perception ng market kung ano yung value ng stocks ng, yung fair value ng ma market value ng stocks ng Tesla. Does not, oh, kasi iba yung sa equity niya eh, kung ano yung nasa financial statements. Kasi kung ano yung sa financial statements, yun na yun. Hindi yan kung ano yung nakalagay sa market value niya. Sa stock market. Ganyan yan. So, kaya nakalagay dito, uh, total equity cannot be expected to be equal to the entity's market value nor the amount that can be raised from either selling or liquidating the entity. Oo. Equity is generally positive, although some of its component may, may be negative, like magkakaroon niya ng negative retained earnings. In some cases, even total equity can be negative such as when the total liabilities exceed total assets yan, insolvent na. Presentation disclosure, to na mention naman natin to kung bakit mahalaga ang pag-present and disclosure sa previous lecture video. Information is communicated through, through presentation and disclosure sa FS. 
Ngayon, nagkakaroon tayo ng effective communication when we are, ah, tawag dito, effective communication makes information more useful. Kasi, anin mong information na meron ka if hindi mo ma-effectively communicate ito sa users? Oo. Paano mo ma-present sa user yung information na yun? So, masasayang ang effort mo in creating that information if you cannot effectively communicate, if you cannot effectively represent or present that information to the users. Masasayang effort mo, kapatid. So, effective communication requires the following. Focusing on presentation disclosure, objectives and principle rather than the rules. Ano mo mo saan? Kung anong sinabi ng standard, huwag mo yan. Ang i-present mo, ang i-focus mo, yung presentation disclosure, objectives and principles, hindi kung ano yung naging standards na ginamit mo. Second, classifying information by grouping similar items and separating the similar items. Example, group of inventories, isama mo yan. Group of accounts payable, isama mo yan. Depende sa kung ano yung nature nila. Aggregating information in a manner that is not obscured either by excessive detail or by excessive summarization. Meaning, sakto lang. Sakto lang yung information. Yung mga necessary information, sakto lang yung dami nila, yung amount nila na nasa FS mo. Huwag mong damihan na kung saan nakakainis na basahin and huwag mo rin sobrahan yung pag-summarize. Kasi baka hindi na yung maintindihan eh. So, the, uh, the objectives are specified sa standards. Provided naman yan. The principles include the use of entity-specific information is more useful than the standardized description kasi mas naintindihan, mas magkakaroon ng sim mas simple, mas madali yung pag-interpret kasi entity-specific eh. Huwag mo inarrow down mo. Huwag mong i-broad. Duplication of information is, uh, is usually unnecessary. Oo. Classifying means combining similar items and Separating these mga items, kaya sabi natin, kung same nature sila, accounts payable, sama mo. Inventory, sama mo. Offsetting of asset liabilities are generally not appropriate. Not appropriate. But, malalaman nyo, in certain, uh, in certain circumstances, magkakaroon kayo ng offsetting. Pero rarely yan nangyayari. Inimension talaga ng standard kung may offsetting. Kung walang offsetting, don't assume na mag-offset kayo. Classification of income expenses. Income and expenses are classified as recognized either in profit or loss on other comprehensive income. Ngayon, take note. Sasabihin din yan. Kapag yung income expenses is under profit or loss, kapag under sa or under sa sana, OCI. OCI tawag namin dyan. Other, natin dyan. Other comprehensive income. Ito, PNL. PNL yan dito, profit or loss. Ito, OCI, other comprehensive income. Sasabihin yan ng standard kung sa profit or loss siya or sa other comprehensive income. Lalo na sa other comprehensive income, may mention talaga yan kung dyan sa ika-classify. Aggregation is the adding together of assets, liabilities, equity, and income or expenses that have shared characteristics and are included in the same classification. So, aggregate, sama-sama. So, concepts of capital and capital maintenance, usually, you know, overlook na to. Financial concept of capital, Capital is regarded as the invested money or invested purchasing power. Capital is synonymous with equity, net asset, or net worth. Pagdating naman sa physical concept of capital, ito naman yung capital is regarded as the entity's productive capacity, meaning units output per day. So, yan lang. Basically, simple lang yan sila. So, with that, end ng discussion natin for the second part ng, uh, second part for the second lecture video, which the topic is yung concept of framework for financial reporting. And with that, uh, short quiz tayo Tuesday morning. Uh, one hour lang siguro yun for both chapters, for both topics. So, we are counting in the conceptual framework for financial reporting. So, morning sa Tuesday, mga 8 or 9 a.m. siguro, nakita ko naman schedule nyo. So, feasible naman na yung one hour short quiz, ha? short quiz in the long quiz for both topics sa Tuesday morning. So, with that, I will end my discussion. Goodbye. Love you.